What's up, comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics, and I asked you what your favorite homage covers are. We've got the results here today. And actually, while the list says top 10, there were so many I had to mention in here that it's more like a top 30. It's pretty cool to get everyone's consensus here. This is a bit different than my personal list of favorite homage covers, so I'm excited to go over it with you. First things first, don't forget to like and subscribe. You'll wanna be commenting below. I guarantee this list is gonna be missing some pretty good ones and some pretty obvious ones. Also consider joining up. It's about $1.99 a month and it's my Patreon. I just have it right here through YouTube. And going forward, trying to make this a full-time gig, having joined members is really helpful. We actually have a sponsor for today's video and it is Wakum, which is gonna be making comic book collecting and tracing your collection a hell of a lot easier and actually funner too. With Wakum, I can take any comic book or graphic novel Here's Batman Damned. I can take it, I can find the UPC code on the back, and all I have to do is scan it, and it comes up showing the book. You can mark it as, yes, it's in my collection. You can mark it as red, and obviously you can look up the book manually, but scanning the UPC is way more fun. Frankly, I don't know why that didn't exist before. It's such a great idea. But one of the things is you can check in on your friend's collection and see what they're up to date on their reading. So you can facilitate trades. You can look at your own collection. You can sort your own collection. You can show yourself what you've read because they have something that marks it as read, not just collected. And you can go into as much detail as you want. You could even write down the approximate grade and all that. But this is the best way to sort your comic book collection. So you're gonna wanna check it out. Oh, and it's free. Yeah. This video is not going to address what's an homage cover versus a cover swipe. We're just going to go off of what you've chosen. Let's kick it off in no particular order. We've got Juggernaut number one. It's a 2020 book from Kyle Hotz. It's an homage of ASM 300, that first appearance of Venom. That is a heavily, heavily homaged cover. That and Spider-Man number one might be the most homaged cover in all of comics. You'll see them pop up a couple times. How about Spawn 230, which is a Todd McFarlane cover homaging a Todd McFarlane cover. Batman 423 to be exact. It's nice to see him go and revisit his own work. Pretty cool. I really like this next entry. This is TMNT Adventures, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number 40. And it's an homage of Incredible Hulk Annual number one. Classic cover that I don't think is homaged enough. Awesome cover, absolutely gorgeous, good choice of a homage for sure. How about X-Men Gold number one, or might be annual. I can't remember if it's a number one or an annual number one, but it's an homage to Excalibur number one. And ironically, the Excalibur run had a couple issues in that same volume, which homaged that image number one as well. Next up, we got Deadpool issue 36, and that is homaging the classic Marvel Comics number one. In fact, this is such an homage that it, out of most of these, looks almost just like it. Batman, issue 118, homages Spider-Man, issue 1, from the 90s. And just like how the 90s Spider-Man had, there were actually silver and gold edition variants that you could do that ended up being quite more expensive, I might add. But they did look gorgeous, and it was a great homage. Speaking of Batman, how about... Batman 227, which homages Detective Comics 31. And I think there might be one more that even homages Batman 227 and Detective 31. Can't quite remember. Uh, but that is a gorgeous one. Either or, I think Batman 227 is the more obtainable one, although it's pretty tough. Uh, Detective Comics 31, good luck. This was a nice choice because I didn't think this is a cover that was homaged very often. This was Venom issue 34, a Mike Mayhew cover, and it's homaging Spider-Man issue 16 from the 90s run. I barely remembered the look of that cover, but looking it up, sure enough, yeah, if you spin these books on the side, yeah, they do look like Spider-Man 16. That's pretty cool. Do you poo? Number one. Very obviously homaging Something is Killing the Children, number one. This one's not subtle at all. Looks great. Ninja Funk, number one. One of my favorite on the whole list. And this is actually homaging the Star Wars New Hope poster. 
That is right. That is pretty darn cool. Uh, not too many on here that reference a poster. How about Amazing Spider-Man 306? And I used to have this book when I was young, and I used to think, hey, that looks like Action Comics number one. Are they being smart? Yes, they were. Action Comics number one homage. Classic Spidey homage and a little Superman there. Pretty cool. Swamp Thing 33 is a direct homage to House of Secrets 92. 92 is that first appearance of Swamp Thing, and very clearly this time it's an homage with, uh, what's it, Abby Arcane right on the cover there. Green Lantern 76 homages Green Lantern 76. That was a cool thing with Volume 2, everyone thinks it's Volume 1. Now, Volume 1 is technically the Golden Age Alan Scott. Volume 2 is the Hal Jordan. Volume 3 is the Kyle Rayner focused run. And Volume 3 homages Volume 2. Marvel Zombies, number one, classic, grotesque, gruesome cover. And it's in its own right a pretty recognizable cover. It is an homage, obviously, to Amazing Fantasy 15, though. Oh, I love this one. Someone actually put this in the comments. I didn't know about this, and now I feel like I have to collect it. Deceased has been doing variant covers to match the iconic X-Men number one from the 90s. That is insane. I can't believe I didn't know this. This is absolutely gorgeous. It makes me really want to get out there and start hunting those variants, which is not something I say very often. <laughs> G.I. Joe, Real American Hero Special, number one, which is a very obvious homage to Spider-Man, number one. Spider-Man, number one, coming up again. Again, that is a super heavily homage cover, one of the most homage covers in the game. And this one looks awesome. How about Vampirella, issue 25? And there were some other covers around that same month publication from Dynamite Comics, that did this, but they are an homage to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. Not a commonly homaged cover. In fact, that month with the Dynamite releases were the only ones I can think of that actually homaged that one. Pretty cool, and we could probably get a little more homages out of that cover for sure. Wolverine issue 55. I can't remember who does this variant, but that is a direct homage to Crime Suspense Stories 22. You know Crime Suspense Stories 22, that's that classic decapitation cover that got banned. I'm pretty sure that was mentioned in Seduction of the Innocent. Well, this awesome beheaded Sabretooth cover is clearly a nod to the past with that, and one that I would love to get my hands on. Never actually held it. I don't even think I've seen that in person ever. A lot of you might have missed this one with Jughead number one. We're talking 2017 Jughead. A direct homage to Werewolf by Night 32, almost down to even the exact same color scheme. That's pretty cool. I love how all the Archie's books always stay topical, and they always do fun stuff like this, like with Archie versus Predator. Archie knows how to stick around, and sometimes it's these homages that help do it. Superior Iron Man, number one. I like this one. From 2014, remember Iron Man 128 when he's looking in the mirror and he looks like a crazy alcoholic? Well, this is a mashup of that, but this time it's with Rocket. Totally cool cover, and considering Iron Man 128 is one of my favorite Marvel comics of all time, of course I'm a little biased, I agree with that entry, man. Darkwing Duck number 7 is a direct homage to Batman number 1. You don't see enough Batman number 1 homages. I know there's that great Harley Quinn one, but that Darkwing Duck, I like that, man. Number 7, cool. Ooh, a great one here, Promethea 27 is an homage to Superman vs. Spider-Man, that oversized Marvel, I think, Treasury Edition? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, that is awesome. You don't see that get homaged enough, and that's one of those classic covers, too. So it's nice to see that. How about Comic Book Guy number one, Simpsons, obviously, which is a direct rip from Fantastic Four number one. Keep in mind, the original Simpsons comic number one from 1993 is also an homage to, so... Really, you have a couple Simpsons comics continually homaging this Fantastic Four number one. I love that attention to detail. I love that revisit of history. That comic book guy number one, I actually really want that. Last couple I'm going to give you here is Spawn issue 221, which is, can you guess, another homage of Amazing Fantasy 15. This one's very direct, very in-your-face obvious homage. And uh, that's another awesome Spawn homage. 
And the last one I'm going to give you here is my pick. This was Joker number seven, Daryl Banks cover, which is a direct homage to the Green Lantern 49 issue, the one with Hal Jordan and all the rings. Well, this time they have it be Joker with all the rings. Nice little one. I don't think that that is a cover that gets homaged enough for such a classic cover, except for I think there's one Lobo cover, which is very desirable, which also homages it. Yeah, that's a good one too. All right, everybody, that was the list. Thank you so much for your entries. All but one on these were all you. I only had one entry on the whole list. So thank you for showing up, helping me out with this awesome list. I can't wait for the next one. I will see you the next video and keep on hunting.